How to Sew the Sewing Bookcase with Amber Makes. It's available in a choice of prints and is the perfect place to keep all your sewing supplies to hand when you're on the go or just to organise them. Follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting out. Take the fabric panel from your kit and give it a press. You can see all of the pieces are on here. They're all labelled. So cut around the outer edge of each one and pin the label to the top of the right side of each one so you remember which is which. All the seam allowances are included. Once you've done that, you can see I've cut them out and labelled the book cover outer and the book cover lining. Then we've got the cushion front and the cushion back. You've got the cushion pocket outer and the cushion pocket lining. Then you've got the short pages and then two pieces for the long pages. Then you've got the inner pocket outer, the inner pocket lining and a tab. These are the extra pieces that you can use for applique or for your own makes. You'll need some soft toy filling and some interfacing too. You'll also need some snap fasteners or press fasteners. Making the cushion pocket. Take the cushion pocket outer and the cushion pocket lining and place them right sides facing, matching the raw edges. Making sure the top raw edges of each are matching up, pinned together and then sew together along the top edge only. Once it's done it will look like this. So lay it open and press that seam open and flat. This helps to keep the seam along the top edge. Now refold the cushion pocket pieces so that they are wrong sides facing and roll the seam between your fingers making sure it lays right along the top edge. Give it a press just to make sure that it's nice and neat and then top stitch along this top edge. That neatens it and also keeps the lining inside and then it will look like this. Now take the cushion front and place the pocket at the bottom. So match up the bottom and the side raw edges and also match up the print because the pocket sits exactly on top of the cushion front. So it doesn't look like it's there. It just makes it look like you've got the cushion front, but you've got that little pocket on it as well. So just take the time to match up the prints and then you'll get a neater finish. Once that's done, you can then pin it together across the bottom as well. Now tack the cushion pocket into place down the side, across the bottom and up the other side within the seam allowance. And I also tacked a, some, some tacking stitches just inside. They'll be removed later, but that just holds it all in place. And that's your cushion pocket finished and attached to the cushion front. Making the cushion. Take the cushion pages pieces. There are two short ones and two long ones. Take one long and one short and place them right sides facing, matching up the short edges on one side and pin them together. Now you need to start and stop finishing, stitching a quarter of an inch from either side. So if you mark this in advance, it's easier. <clears throat> mark quarter of an inch from one side and quarter of an inch in from the other side. Just use an erasable pen or a pencil for this. Now stitch together, starting at one mark and finishing at the other, reverse stitching at either end of the seam. And then it will look like this and you can see that a quarter of an inch is unstitched. This will help when you're sewing it to the cushion front and back. It will go around the corners more neatly. Now take the other long page and sew that, pin that to the short end of the other short page so that you're alternating short and long pages. Again, mark quarter of an inch from one side and quarter of an inch in from the other side. Now stitch together, starting and finishing at these marks. Then pin the final short page onto the other end of the long page. Just check as you're doing this that you have alternated long and short pages, otherwise it won't fit around your cushion properly. Again, measure a quarter of an inch in from the top and the bottom and sew together between those marks. You can pin them all and sew them all in one go like I'm doing here. And then finally, Pin them together, a short and a long page, so that you've got a pages loop. All of the seams are sewn in the same way, starting and finishing quarter of an inch from each end. Now sew all of those seams and you will end up with this continuous piece that I've called the pages loop 
and I've started and stopped finishing quarter, finished stitching a quarter of an inch from each end and then press the seams open and flat. Now take your cushion front and take one of the long pages and place this right sides together with the right hand side of the cushion front. Now match up the open seam allowance to the top edge of the cushion front. This means that the seam is quarter of an inch down from the top. And then at the other end, match the other end, the seam that joins the long to the short pages so that the seam allowance lines up with the bottom edge of the cushion front again so that the seam is quarter of an inch up from the bottom edge of the cushion front and then pin it into place. Once you've pinned the top and the bottom into place you can then pop a pin between making sure the raw edges match up. Now stitch together but starting at one of the seams not at the top but actually on the seam like I'm showing you here Stitch all the way along and stop stitching exactly on top of the other seam. Don't stitch beyond it. And then it will look like this. So a quarter of an inch at the top and the bottom of the cushion front is unstitched. Now you can fold the short pages round at a right angle. So you can see I'm pinning the seam allowance to keep it open and then pin at the other end. Again, that seam needs to be a quarter of an inch in from the side. So if you match up the edge of the seam allowance with the edge of the cushion front, it will be. Pin it either side and then pin it together along the bottom edge. And start stitching at one seam and finish stitching exactly on the other seam. And then it will look like this. So the bot that short page is attached to the bottom. To go up the other side, fold it round. So you're making a little right angled square. Pin it together. And then at the other end, again, make sure that the seam is a quarter of an inch from the top. So if you match up the edge of the seam allowance with the top of the cushion front, it will be. Pin it into place and then pin it between. Because you press the seam allowances of the pages loop in advance, open and flat, it makes it so much easier to do this. And then sew this into place, starting one seam and finishing exactly on the other seam. That's that long pages in. And then the final section is to stitch across the, the short pages section across the top of the cushion front. So just like you've done before, open it out to make a right angle. So you've got a little square of fabric in the corner. Pin the seam allowance down. And then with this side, because it's already pinned there, you could just open that one out to make a little right angle, making sure that the raw edges are matching up. And then pin it together across the top, again, matching the raw edges. And then sew together all the way across the top edge. And this attaches the pages loop to the cushion front. Press those seams over like this to one side. And then turn it all right sides out, just pushing out those corners. Now you need to attach the cushion back to the other side of the pages loop in exactly the same way. So start by pinning the long pages to the right hand side of the cushion back. It will be obvious which side you need to pin in place, but I'm pin pinning it to the right hand side of the cushion back. Again, make sure that the seams are a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom each time and matching up the edge of the seam allowance to the bottom of the cushion back means that this seam will be quarter of an inch up from the bottom. And then pin together between. Now we need to leave a turning gap on this edge so we can turn the cushion right sides out. So just double check because it needs to be on the right hand side of the cushion back, this turning gap. So just double check that. Now, if you take your tape measure and measure to mark the halfway point. Now mark and measure one inch either side of this center point. And that's a two inch gap. So this time start stitching exactly on that seam, stop at one side of the turning gap, start stitching at the other turning gap and finish on exactly on the other seam. So now you can see that's joined into place with the turning gap left unstitched. So all you need to do now is sew the rest of the pages all the way around the edge exactly the same as you did with the cushion front starting and stopping the quarter of an inch from the top so it's joined together in exactly the same way 
press those seams over to one side. It just helps to keep the seams laying on the edge when you turn it right sides out in a moment. Now turn the whole cushion right sides out through that turning gap. Push out the corners with your fingers. And then use a tool that's not too sharp but is pointed to just push out all of those corners. By having the pages as separate pieces, it helps to, you get a nicer, neat finish than if it was just one long piece because those seams sit at the, all of the edges. Now take the time now to roll each of the seams between your fingers on your ironing board and then just press them. Take care not to press and the rest of it, or you might crease the other pieces. Just roll the seams, lay them flat on your board and press them. This just helps to give you a more structured finish. Once you've pressed it all over, it will look like this. You can now remove that extra row of tacking stitches that we put in earlier just to make sure that the pocket matched up exactly. Because when you're sewing all the pages into place, sometimes this can shift a little bit. So by putting these extra tacking stitches, it just keeps it in place and makes sure those prints stay matching up. So just remove those tacking stitches because you don't need them now. If you've done your tacking stitches using your longest stitch length, then they're easy to pull out. Now you need to stuff your cushion. So take your polyester fibre fill, your soft toy filling, pull it apart to separate to put some air in it because you don't want any lumps, otherwise you'll have a lumpy cushion. But if you pull it all apart to separate and just put a little piece bit in one at a time and push it into the corners and then just keep filling it. Now you don't want it to be over full. It's not supposed to be a, like a stuffed super stuffed soft toy it's a cushion that needs to be flat at the top and the bottom because it's going to sit inside the case so just make sure that you filled in all of the corners i like to fill the corners first and then fill in between so it's important that when you stuff it the cushion is structured so that all the corners are filled but it needs to be nice and flat so as you're stuffing it, just put a little bit in at a time and then just press it flat and then you can soon see if there's any sections that need a little bit more. So I'm just putting a little bit more because that top corner didn't have enough in it. And then give it a little press flat with your hands just to see whether you need any more. So I can see there's a little bit at the front that isn't filled. So I'll just pop that in. Once you're happy that it's flat along the sides and the top and the bottom, you can pin the turning gap closed. Because you press the edges of the turning gap under earlier, then it's easier to do this. So pin them so that the, edge, the turned under edges lie together. And now all you need to do is slip stitch this close. You need to do this by hand because this seam needs to lay nice and flat. If you do it by machine, you'll have a little ridge. So just push your needle in at one end of the turning gap. Leave a little bit of thread on the front, it stops it coming undone. And work two or three tiny stitches on top of each other. Now to slip stitch it closed, thread your needle under the fold of the fabric on one side and pull it out under the fold on the other. And then thread it, push the needle under the fold of the fabric on one side and push it out on the other. Now this seam will actually be covered by the case. So it doesn't matter if it's not really, really neat, but try and keep it as, you don't want to have too many the stitches coming out onto the front, the, the back or onto the pages. So, but just try and keep it neat by just threading your needle under the, turned under fabric on one side and out at the other. Use a matching thread for this. So although it will be covered by the case later, it's nice to keep this neat because you don't want to have any stitches that are shown on the pages or the cushion back later. Now, once you get when you get to the other end, work two or three small stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread so it doesn't come undone. Then snip off the end of the thread. Now push it all the stuffing out because it will have moved while you're doing this. Just push it out towards the edges so you make sure your cushion is nice and flat. And your book cushion is now finished. And you can put this to one side 
while you're making the case. Making the inner pocket. Take the inner pocket outer and the inner pocket lining and place them right sides facing, making sure the top raw edges match up and then pin them together across the top. The inner pocket will be sewn to the lining and is some extra pockets to keep all your sewing bits and pieces inside. Pin them together at either end and across the top. Now sew together across the top edge only and then it will look like this. Open it out and press that seam allowance flat. I've done this in advance. And then refold it so that the seam is laying right at the top edge and give it a press. Then top stitch across the top edge to neat and hold the lining inside. And then tack together down the side and across the bottom within the seam allowance. And then your inner pocket is finished and will look like this. Now take the book cover lining and place the inner pocket right sides up on the right side of it, but matching up the bottom and the side raw edges because this pocket will be sitting at the bottom. Pin it together, down the sides and across the bottom, making sure that the raw edges match up. Then once you've pinned it into place, Tack it into place, down the side, across the bottom and at the other side. Again, do this within the seam allowance and then you won't have to remove the tacking stitches. Now your inner pocket is attached. Now if you want to divide this pocket so you can put more items in it, then the best way to do this is to measure two and a quarter of an inch in from the left hand side. And I did this at the top and the bottom. And then join those two marks you can do it by measuring with your rotary cutter two and a quarter of inches or you can mark with the tape measure like I've just done and then draw a line using an erasable pen from the top to the bottom and then repeat this on the other side. Pin it into place just either side, it just helps to hold it still because you're going to sew these dividing lines in a moment. Then mark the other side. Now the reason it's this measurement is that when you attach the cushion, these dividing lines will then be in the centre of the front and the back of the bookcase, which means you've got extra pockets. If you want to have big pockets and not divide them, depending on what you want to put in your pockets, then don't stitch these dividing lines. But I wanted to put lots of little different tools, so I wanted dividing lines, but it's up to you. Or you could just put dividing lines in one place. Now to stitch these, stitch from the bottom up to the top and down to the bottom again. That makes the top extra secure. Now you can see I've divided the pocket and that pocket is now attached to the book cover lining. King the tab. Take the tab you can remove the label and fold it in half with right sides facing lengthways so that you're matching up the raw long edges and pin them together. Now sew together down the length and across the sh one short end only and it will look like this. Fold the seam allowance over and press it. Now trim off the fabric across the corner just to remove the bulk so you get a neater tab and then grade the seam allowance and then just cut off that little corner and then trim that top seam allowance in half. It just removes the fabric bulk. Now turn the tab right sides out. I'm using my turning tool for this because it's easier. So just pop the tube inside, take the stick and push it through. If you don't have a turning tube, you'll just have to turn it right sides out. Push out the corners and the stick is ideal here for just pushing out those corners. So you've got nice, neat little corners and then run the stick along it to put that seam allowance on the edge. Give it a press so the seam allowance all on the edge and then top stitch along the all the way round and that's your tab finished. Assembling the book cover. Press interfacing on the wrong side of the book cover to start with to give it a little extra stiffness and then you can attach the tab. So down the left hand short side of the book cover mark the centre point. Now take your tab, place it right sides down on top, making sure that it's central. Now the tab needs to extend a quarter of an inch above. So the raw edge, the one that's not sewn under, that's got to extend a quarter of an inch beyond the edge of the cover. This makes it extra secure and stops it getting pulled out. Double check that it's still in the centre 
and quarter of an inch above the edge and then pin it into place. Remember that it's along the left hand side of the book cover. Now make sure it's laying straight and pin it together at the other end. Now tack the tab into place across the top and then a little bit further in using a longest stitch on your sewing machine as the second row will be removed later. Now take the book cover lining, the one that's got the pocket on it, and place the book cover outer and the book cover lining right sides facing, making sure the top edges are matching the top edges. Now pin it together, pin together in one corner and then pin it together in the other corner and then pin it together between. They're both exactly the same size so they will fit. So I always like to pin it together in the corners first and then you can make sure everything's lining up. You can see the end of the tab is sticking up beyond the edge of the raw edges and now you can line up all the, all the raw edges between the corners and pin it together. Now we need to leave a turning gap so we can turn it right sides out and I'm going to leave that in the in the bottom, the centre of the bottom edge. So measure to mark the centre and then measure one inch either side of this centre mark and this marks a two inch turning gap in the centre of the bottom edge. So you can now stitch them together starting at one side of the turning gap all the way around and finishing at the other side of the turning gap. Once that's done, Press the seam allowances over to one side. This helps the seam to lay on the edge when you turn it right sides out and clip the corners. Also, press both sides of the turning gap over to the inside. This holds it to the inside, which you'll need later. So just trim off the corners and then grade the seams by cutting off a little bit extra just so that you can remove the bulk. You've got quite a lot of layers here because of the pocket as well. So you want to have nice neat corners so trimming off this seam allowance will help with that just don't cut the stitches now once you've done that you can turn the whole book cover right sides out so just put your fingers through the turning gap pull out one of the corners and then pull it all through the turning gap the turning gap is big enough to get it all through but do it slowly so that you don't split any of the seams on the side and also because you've got the interfacing on the book cover outer, it's a little bit stiffer. Push out all of those corners with your fingers. Just to get them turned right sides out for now. And then push something, the turning tool stick or some blunt scissors into the corners just to push them out but just do this carefully because you there's a lot of bulk so you'll need to really push them but don't push them too hard because you don't want to split the fabric and leave any holes once that's done press it so that all these seams lay right on the edges so roll them between your fingers make sure the edges of the turning gap are still unpressed underneath you can also remove the second row of tacking stitches because the tab needs to be facing outwards at this point so just roll it between your fingers, the seams between your fingers, and give it a good press so that everything is laying right on the edge. It's particularly important where along the sides and the bottom where that pocket is attached. Make sure the edges of the turning gap is stays turned under and give it a good press. Once you're happy that everything is nice and flat, top stitch all the way around the edge it neatens it and also holds the lining to the inside. Now your book cover, the outer section of the book cover, is now finished and all ready for attaching the cushion. Assembling the book cushion. Place the cushion inside the book cover so it's centrally placed and then I found it easier if I mark and measure exactly where the book cushion is. So if you put the book cushion on top and just mark where it is, it would be in the centre and then draw the lines so it matches exactly. It just helps with positioning it. And you can also measure at this stage to make sure that these lines are in the right place. Then pin the book cushion to the cover. So make sure that the seams that are joining the pages to the cushion are right on the edge. 
pin it into place. So the book cushion is a little bit smaller than the cover. It's about a quarter of an inch smaller at the top and the bottom, and it's also placed centrally across. So it's easy to work out where to put these lines. So if you pin it, the cushion into place at the top and the bottom, then you can pin it between. You can make sure that the seam that's joining the pages to the cushion is right on the edge, and then pin it along those lines that you've drawn earlier. Once you're happy it's pinned on one side, you can then pin it on the other side. Because you've drawn the lines about a quarter of an inch up from the top and the bottom, you can make sure that the corners of the cushion, I found it easier to anchor the corners first and then pin it between. Because it's only stuffed with tough, soft toy filling, it's quite easy to manipulate and move out of the way. And once you've sewn it all into place, you can plump the cushion back up if you've flattened any. But the important thing is to make sure that the seam of the cushion is laying right on the edge and that you pin it to the lines that you've drawn. So once you're happy, it's pinned into place all the way round. You can also pin it at the top and the bottom. So again, make sure the seam that's joining the long pages to the short pages is exactly on the edge. But you pressed it earlier, so it will be, but just move it around to make sure it is. And then line it up with those drawn lines and pin it into place. Now you can sew the book cushion to the book cover. So you need to do this by hand. So use a matching thread and attach the thread by pushing your needle up in the top of one corner, it doesn't matter which corner you start with. Leave a length of thread on the outside, it just stops it helping to pull it, it coming out. And then work a few short stitches on top of each other. Now this is slip stitched into place, exactly the same way as you slip stitched the cushion closed. So you push your needle and through the lining of the cover and up through the edge of the cushion. It's really important that you don't push your needle through to the outer. These stitches will only go into the lining and only into the seam of the book cover cushion. So as you're doing it, just move it around just as you're going, because you have to remove the pins to make sure that you're, the seam is still on the edge. I help, find it helps to just fold the book cover back a bit, but do check every now and then just to make sure that your stitches aren't coming through to the outside. So push the needle, under the lining and into the seam of the cushion and out. And then back under the lining and into the seam of the cushion. When you reach the section where the pocket is on the book cover lining, you just sew through the pocket itself. You don't need to sew through to the lining, just through to the pocket. So into the pocket, out through the seam on the cushion, short vertical stitch, back into the pocket and out through. Now, we're going to sew round this twice, so don't worry at this stage if your stitches are spaced apart, a bit further apart, because you're going to sew between them. I find it easier to work these stitches about an inch apart, because that just anchors the cushion to the cover whilst you're trying to get the seams laying on the edges. Then, to make it extra secure, you work round a second time. So at this stage, just concentrate on making sure that you're anchoring the cushion to the cover and that your seams aren't coming through to the right side. You can normally feel as you're stitching whether your needle is going through, but do just check every now and then. On the pocket section, it's a little bit easier because there's so many layers, it's harder to get all the way through anyway. Now, when you get right, get down to the bottom, stitch across the bottom, up the other side and across the top. Once you've stitched all the way round, it will look like this. So it is anchored into place, but I just find, because I want it to be extra secure and also because I find it easier to leave bigger gaps in the first stage, slip stitch around all, all over again, but this time position those stitches between the stitches in the first round. This just makes it extra secure. And I know that when you're hand stitching in something into place, sometimes obviously it's not as secure as machine stitching and you don't want the book cushion to fall off or some of the stitching to come undone so this second round of stitches does help 
If you need to start and finish a thread, which you probably will, just work a few stitches on top of each other, cut the thread and then start a new one. And when I start a new thread, I always start it on top of some of the stitches already worked so that they overlap. And this just makes it a little bit more secure. Again, do check that you haven't gone through to the outer, but slip stitch all the way around. Once you've done that and you get right back to the top to secure the thread, just work a few stitches on top of each other. Then push your needle through the cushion a little bit further away because it helps if the end is further is away from where you stopped. Stop it coming undone. Snip the thread. And your cushion is now neatly attached to your book cover in the centre. Now, obviously, it will have got a little bit creased because you've been folding and manipulating it as you've gone along. So just lay those cushion, the cover outer flat and give it a press. Now you need to attach either press fastener or, or snaps so that the tab can fold over onto the front. So attach the male half to the tab, whether you're using a press fastener or a snap fastener, fold the tab over onto the front and where it overlaps, attach the female section. Make sure you don't attach it through the pocket. So make sure you go inside that and then you can snap it closed and the tab will hold your little sewing bookcase closed. And it's all finished now, ready to put whatever you want to put inside. You can put your sewing items inside or anything else, notes or little pencils. You can get put a pair of scissors inside and put, you can put needles. It's a really good little extra sewing kit to have or makes a really nice gift for somebody. You could fill it up and put threads in it. It's a good sewing kit to take on holiday or one to just keep in your sewing box. And the cushion you can use as a pin cushion. So put all your pins in there and you've got everything that you need to hand and ready. Then all you have to do is close it up, close the press fastener, the snap fastener, and your little sewing bookcase is all finished. <laughs>